Welcome back. If you've arrived here without watching part 3.1, then you might want to view that first. Okay, so let's put what we've learnt into the context of trading optimizations. Overfitting in optimizations happens for two primary reasons, in my view, and that's overfitting of noise and overfitting of events. Let's take a look at each of these in turn and we'll start with the example of overfitting to noise. Price data is made up of a number of different components. The first is random noise and the second is what I call purposeful price action. And it's the second of these that we want to be targeting with our systems, not the noise. So by attempting to model the overall price action too closely with a large number of parameters means that the model is forced to adapt to the noise and the random action to a degree that's to the detriment of being able to model the thing we really want to, the purposeful price action. And the outcome is that the model has reduced predictive power. So it's just like the example we saw in the previous part where we modeled too closely and ended up with a polynomial model instead of the linear model that we really needed. The fact is that the model will be attempting to accommodate for the random uh, noise patterns, which are patterns that won't be predictably repeatable in the future because they're random. And this means that the ability of the model to predict purposeful price action is reduced and the value of the model is eroded. Now let's move over to the other reason for overfitting, market events. So let's use a scenario to illustrate this. So here we've got a simple price chart. Let's just say that this is um, the euro dollar. And one of our parameter sets in the optimization takes a trade on the pullback of price just here and exits the trade at the top of this swing. So this clearly leads to a nice profitable trade. Now let's look at what a different parameter set did. So let's say that this one enters before the the red parameter set here on a very small pullback. But by the time the chart gets to, to this point here, the trade is still, is still open. It hasn't exited yet. So where we are at the moment is in a less profitable position than with the, the red parameter set. Now at this point in time, let's say something happens, a major event. Let's say it's the first Friday of the month and NFP has just come out. So what happens to the price? Well, it's going to go one way or the other. Let's, in this example, suppose that the market sees the news as bad for the dollar and therefore the, the price shoots up. Now, what happens to to this trade here. Well, price goes up so quickly, maybe there's some filter on the, the system, which means it doesn't open for large spread. And so all the way up here, the trade carries, and eventually the trade closes at this position here. So what looked as though it was a parameter set that wasn't trading the normal price action as effectively as the, the red parameter set here, all of a sudden gets a huge profitable trade. And that clearly makes this parameter set look much better than it actually is. It's not the fact that the, the news coming out is something that those, those parameters were actively trading. It's just a chance event. And what's happened here is that the, the parameter set has, um, has benefited from, from that chance, chance effect. But equally, it could have gone the other way. The price could have fallen. And in that case, this would have caused a big losing trade for this blue parameter set. 
Now, if during an optimization, there's a small number of the parameter sets that take advantage of multiple of these, these events that happen, then they'll end up winning the optimization because they're taking advantage of this and causing hugely profitable trades compared to the other parameter values. But is that because they're great parameter values of a generalized model, or is it because of pure chance? Well, the parameters are fitted to the past data really well, and they take advantage of that. But the probability that these values will continue to take advantage of NFP in the future is pretty low. It's probably the same chance as any other of the parameter values. So the answer to our question is that no, it's not because of a generalized model. And yes, it's pure chance. The parameters won in the optimization because of event overfitting. Now, the converse of this is also true. What if the parameters that had the best genuine edge just by pure bad luck happened to be affected negatively by a few of these news events that happened during the optimization? This means they'll appear way down in the ranking and won't get considered when we choose parameters from the optimization. And so the result of this is that those parameters that did have the best genuine edge don't get selected because of this bias that we've introduced with the event-driven overfitting. So click on the link to part 3.3, where I'll explain the implications of the difference between a genuine edge and a fake edge.